I welcome you to one opened, damaged, sorry for itself looking, matrix LED headlight taken out of an Audi TT Mark III and this particular sample may or may not have been cooked in my oven. I am still unprepared to declare since my girlfriend girlfriend might be watching these videos. So yeah, by some wonder I managed to heat it up and open it up. And now I would like to show you everything that's inside in this 2200 euro LED headlight. Now that we got the glass off and away, I packaged it really nicely into some foil so it doesn't get any fingerprints or anything. That being said, I should put on some gloves, but the thing is this example has been severely damaged and there has been a plenty of gravel or sand that has find its way into this headlight and even mixed with it with this butyl resin or however you pronounce it that is used to seal so i don't think i will be putting this headlight back together it is more for a educational purposes and for me to show you everything that is inside because i really find these things interesting that being said, let's dive into it. But first, let me just take the beach out of it. And I have already done this multiple times. There is still, every single time you shake it or turn it the other way around. I don't know whether this car has been driven by Ariel herself. Anyways, I have already removed, of course, the Modules, the power modules, there is two on the, on the other underside, there is one behind it. And then there is main connector, which is um, in this case very nicely shown through the hole of the housing. On the first glance, it seems a bit different than the normal LED headlight that we have disassembled some time ago. I think those pieces and this piece over here are different as well as these ribs over here. I can't remember seeing them on the normal LED. I think it was a flat surface. So maybe it's a either early model type of thing or matrix LED type of thing. I need to check that out. but. Yeah, um, last time I did this, I struggled a bit to remove everything because there are a couple of screws that are really well hidden and you cannot access all of them until you don't pull something out. However, I still cannot remember the exact, the exact, um, how you call it? <clears throat> exact way of this assembly so what comes out first what comes out second so I guess it's going to be a guessing game again and me not trying to break anything game as well okay I think I need to start here then again I think I've broken off this piece last time so I am really reluctant to do the same this time around. Then again, I cannot remember for the life of me what comes out first. I, I guess I guess we'll have to just probably attack the visible screws and then go from there. I 
am not sure, however, just how much of a good tactics that is going to be. For yeah, for the most part of the thing, you will need a Torx 20. And in my case, I have become a bit lazy. That's why we are going to be using a power tool. I know it's not optimal because of the noise, but it is optimal because of the sheer speed. It, allow, it will allow us to be really quick on this assembling, which is something I have come to sh cherish. Last time I disassembled the LED one, I went so much more into detail on where every single screw is at. However, it turned out I have removed plenty more screws that was needed in the first place. So this time I won't be going that much into detail on where the specific screws are at, how they are bolted and so on and so forth. I would really love to find the, the correct procedure for removing all this as I would really, oh, there we go, there we go, I think we made a good step, I think this might have been a good step, I have made something move without breaking it, okay. yes we didn't break it, so we got our first step properly which is removing this piece, this piece that sits right on top of the projector. I'm going to put all of the pieces in one box, so if by any chance I decide to put this thing back together, which I most probably won't, we will be able to do so. It showed us two more screws on this side. I can see another one hidden right there. That means that this thing probably needs to go out first. However, that is just an assumption. And I have really no idea what I'm doing. You really need to be mindful of this corner over here. It is really sharp and probably breaks really easily. Oh, yeah. The one that caused us trouble last time, it is the one hidden right down there in the corner. Are we... Yes, there it is. I think you can count the screws so far, but you will be quite surprised on how, just how many screws there, there is in this thing, holding it in. Okay, okay, okay. If I remember correctly, and I don't, of course, it was only a month ago, there is a way to get this thing out, and it is by pulling it out. I'm not sure whether I remember that correctly. And I really hope you don't mind me Blab blabbering so much. Just trying to make it interesting for you as well. As much as it is for me. So this is the cornering light or all weather light as Audi likes to call it. The one on the on the side. But yeah, no, no, it doesn't come out now. It comes out much later. I would say we need to remove this piece, but then again, this piece comes so much later, I think. 
Okay, okay, okay. There are a couple. These two screws I won't be touching because they are just holding the reflector for the indicators. So I know those two are not supposed to be removed. There is one screw hidden behind here. Another one over there, which huh, I don't think needs to be removed. But then again, let's see what happens. This one is really behind everything. So it seems like it really shouldn't be the one to go out first as we cannot even get it out. There it is. The one that is on the other side of this thing. Okay. And then the other one that is really not, doesn't look like it's supposed to, go, to, to be undone. Because you really need to have a really thin Torx 20 screwdriver. It is much better to have a screwdriver than these old extensions with bits because it really needs to be thin in order for us to reach where the screw goes in. Screwdriver, sorry. Come on. No way I am going to be able to do that. Yes, this one is the one that we need to go to get out. Let me just think whether I have, what do we have here? Torx 10, that will be helpful. All right, one garage visit later and one, okay, we have a T20 screwdriver, which is hopefully, I cannot say anything with certainty going to help us release the daytime running lights and the indicators out and so far we've managed to undo the screw but the thing still won't budge okay as if something is holding it still in place so have I forgotten anything? Don't think so. Have I not undone a screw or something? I don't think so. Why isn't this thing? There it is. There. This is the screw. Why isn't it moving then? It is supposed to get out, right? Please. Hopefully. Uh, all right, these ones are out, these ones are out. Okay, there we go. Ah, yuck! There is a reason why I needed to yank it out like that, and it is because these let me just. Let me just firstly unplug this plug over here and see which side works the best. I think, yeah, I'm not going to be able to push the clip open and then wiggle the connector out. There we have it. This is much better than our LED, LED only headlight that we did some time ago. Give me a second to brush the beach off the table. Did that perfectly, Peter. Okay. I hope something went into the bin. All right. So the reason I need the reason I needed to yank it out like that is because of these pieces. These are. Um, optical fibers, pretty thick ones, and they have clips that clip into the respective LEDs and the rest of the headlight. And there is one over here, one in the middle, one in the corner, and that is the reason why you need to yank it out once you have all the screws out. And this one is the one I needed the screwdriver for, because you need to get all the way from here 
go there. This thing also holds the indicator lights. I don't know just how much you can see from here, but in the reflection you can you can see the the yellow LEDs hopefully. I think they are here now. So those are the LEDs and I wanted to compare them to the non-matrix one because these ones are sequential LEDs so they they don't light up uh, all at the same time but they start from here and go outwards. Looks really nice, looks really cool. They say it's a bit safer for the road. Don't know about that but anyways yeah plenty of dust and sand all around other than that one cool piece of equipment going into the box I like to put these things on the side for now gloves as well we don't need them currently this many screws we have out so far and it opens up a view there is a dead bug inside wonderful there is a plug here that's actually this plug and I think this thing is um, some sort of ceramics or something like that which is supposed to let certain amount of air through and with that air the hum humidity as well so this is what's supposed to help your lights stay dry from the inside and there's a couple other ventilation points in the headlight but anyways that one is for that this looks really complicated and quite a lot different than the LED one let me just see you can see that the whole matrix or the how you have uh, the high beams are on a motorized swivel also there is another screw that holds this lower piece which we are going to be able to remove now one screw over there that we just removed the head the this unit as well i s assume is the same as the leds one led ones not non-matrix leds because there isn't any reason for it to be different however i am ready to be surprised okay a couple other okay so definitely the next step is to remove the cornering cornering lights i am however going to go ahead and unscrew this thing over here but i don't think it's going to make a difference because i saw that this piece is screwed in over here i think i think it is yeah and it's supposed to go out first but it cannot go out first until we remove this screw over here that means that we need to yank out the cornering light in order to move on with our disassembly yeah yeah and like i said i already removed quite a lot of sand out of this headlight so for yanking out i like to use my it doesn't want to move. it doesn't move a bit because it has clip right here and it has a couple of swiveling balls so to say so this isn't going to be a easy removal that being said let's ah, try it out oh my god please try to find a better way to do this now as it turns out i don't know somehow Somehow, no, somehow I am supposed to get, oh, at least this part out to be able to snake. I don't think this is the right 
the right way to do that. However, now that we are almost halfway through, I'm going to have to do this like that. So you can actually get this piece out, but there is a pin over here that latches from the back side onto these, this cover, this shroud. So I didn't break it, which is great, but this is not the, the perfect way to remove this. However, this may be a really nice piece to um, modify, customize to your likings. Going to the box, let me just show you how far we are currently. So you can see the whole matrix thing is on this swivel. It has a really big heat heatsink. So it is going to be really interesting. The dead bug is over here, if you wondered. So now what I'm really confused about, there is this piece over here that sits on the swiveling ball. In order to get this piece out, I need to snake this thing around here. But I cannot do that until I don't remove the screw that sits just over here. And now I question if this screwdriver is going to be long enough, strong enough and everything else enough barely to be able to undo the screw that is holding this upper piece no we are of course missing an inch go figure all right so that means that we need to find a way to forcefully to forcefully somehow snake this thing past this thing and then undo the cornering cornering light module very small LED on the upper side which projects the light onto the reflector of course which hit, which sits like that in the car A really nice um, heatsink the reflector is made out of plastic this is the clip that holds it in place and allows it to slide back backwards and forwards. This is where the swiveling ball goes in and I think this is where the other swiveling ball yeah, goes in. And I really don't know how we managed to... This is supposed to go downwards to get out. Anyways, we did it. So going back to the box. This has in return given us the access to the screw that is all the way over here. So my suggestion is get a really, really thin, really, really long Torx 20 screwdriver. And it's going to save your life if you plan on doing this really even once. So now, oh no. This still isn't enough. Okay, I guess there is, of course there is, there is another screw. There is another screw which sits behind over here. And honestly, I am going to be able to unscrew it. However, I am not sure that anyone would be possible to get it in this way. So I might have jumped the gun on some things over here. Which means I'm probably going to go ahead and try to remove the matrix assembly at this point. Let me just see if... Yeah, it has a connector with pinch locking mechanism on both sides, so pinch it once on this side, pinch it on the other side and it comes out. This is the connector that we just removed, going directly to the matrix unit. Two screws on this side, probably a couple of screws be behind 
So this is what, what, what bugs me. I really don't see the logical, um, how you call it. What comes in first, what, what comes second. I'm, I'm liking the word right here uh, because I, I do know the word in German, for example, but I cannot remember in English. Um, the way the things grow in and out. Okay. Okay, so this thing has led us to have a free access, almost free access. Aha, there is a swivel, swiveling ball over here and the other one is on the other side, but I will try to set this one free somehow. Don't really know how. That is what really bugs me. How do you call it? The way it goes out is really not obvious. to help me much ah, we're here now all right now let's take a step back try to figure out no definitely we need to yank the, that piece out we just need to find a way to undo the swivel ball using the brute force really isn't my thing when talking, uh, when talking about electronics but I think we did it okay however we didn't get far there we go yes all right so there is one swiveling point in here, there is another over here, and the third one is this piece that comes from the, on the front. So this is where the connector is at, this is where the ball goes in, and this here swivels on this side. So it has a multiple axis of swivel motion. Looks really interesting. So there are LEDs, pointing backwards uh, in relevance to in reference to the um, driving direction and then there is th three look at just how many screws there is there oh my goodness these two are different than this one this one only has two really large LED chips I am going to try to film it I just don't know just how much you are going to be able to see. And these two have some sort of a LED chip that has some sort of clear um, clear lens, clear plastic lens on it that shoots the light into these two reflectors. There is a fan over here. It's it's really mighty fan, I have to add. All right, so this is the fan. This is the thing that people usually have problem with because it is prone to going bad and it seems like it is blowing the air into this heat, heat shield, heat sink, sorry. Anyways, this on the side, we are going to come back to this. So I'll be leaving that here. Another piece of sand castle. Castles in the sand. Moving, moving on. Yes, there is a hidden screw behind the matrix uh, assembly. So you cannot, or? Oh no, these were two pieces. I should have done this first. Look. 
Ah, uh, all right. So for anyone uh, looking, watching this video, there is only one screw holding this whole shroud in place. It is this one, which sits really far up front. And then you can just yank it out. It is going to allow you to remove everything else much easier than I just did. Really nice piece. Also probable for customization. Now this shows a really nice image of the rest of the thing and we will be probably comparing this also to the non-matrix LED headlight because now it seems to me that it's it looks quite similar. Let us get the last of those screws out. I just don't know why they hit have to make it so complicated because I already have like a half a kilo of screws in there. There we go. This is another piece. It, it is held by one, two, three, five screws just to hold this dumb little thing in place. Don't know what's it for. Anyways. Aside from this gaping hole on the top of the headlight, this looks like a properly standard non-matrix LED headlight. However, we are going to go further into inspection. Yes, other than, other than this connector. So this connector is different. I'm interested in finding out if this module is any different than the non-LED one, the non-matrix one, sorry. Those are the LED modules for the daytime running lights. There is one over here, one in the corner, and one down here. So three of them are used for daytime running lights. We need to remove them first. This one already has one screw re Whoa, removed. Feisty little guy. And it should come out. I cannot hold it with one hand. A really standard locking connectors. You can probably, hopefully, see. Let me try to. There are four LEDs inside, and this is where the optical fibers clip in. So they are held by these plastic pins on the side. And I don't know what, what for this fifth LED on the side is for. Other than that, a regular PCB stuck onto an aluminum heat sink. Right. Continuing to remove the second and the lower daytime running light module. All right. The same type. Whoa, this bug is still alive. Oh no. And oh, the reason I jumped is because I didn't expect it to be alive after so much time. A, B. You really don't know, don't want to know which kind of bug this is because this is the stinking bug. Ah, there we go. And this bug stinks really badly when touched. <laughs> that scared me properly. Anyways, this is not what you usually find in a matrix headlight. So let me just go ahead and remove it from existence and then I'll be right back. I'm just starting to wonder if we can find some gold or anything inside since there is already plenty of things you don't usually find in a matrix headlight. The lower daytime running light module consists of only two LEDs same style of pins that uh, the clips that hold the optical fiber in place a little bit smaller than the first one 
And then there is the third one, which has a screw in the upper corner. And then another one right next to the connector. Okay, there it is. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think we are going to be able to get it out before removing before removing the dipped beam or the lower low beams module out. Yeah, no way. Okay, it's it will stay in there for some time more. Let us see, there is a really big swivel ball on one side, there are two more on the other, on the... Let me just show you what I'm doing, okay? Okay, these two screws or these three screws hold the swiveling point over here. Then there is the lower swiveling point which is motorized, we know that. Ouch, sorry about that. And then on this side, I just realized this thing is broken, but this is another swiveling point that is clipped into the head uh, headlight housing. So that should go out really easily. The one that I'm worried about is the lower ball point that is motorized because it is really tough to get the ball out of. Okay, so third one needs to go out as well. All right. Okay, this has given us some sort of movement. Let me just see just how much of a movement we can get from here. And I think this is, like I said, clipped into the whole thing. It doesn't seem clipped into. It doesn't want to go out, even though I am quite sure it is clipped into. At least maybe there is a screw somewhere behind, behind this piece, but we can definitely, we definitely cannot get this piece out. Okay, so that means we are left with the lower ball point that needs to go out. For that I'm going to use my glove to yank it out, to try and yank it out, to be precise. There we go, something happened. Ah! All right, we got it out. This is such a complicated mechanism. For I don't know what reason they have to make it so complicated. Ugh, no, I'm stuck. I just don't know. Ah, I pinched myself really hard. Ugh. This is why I like to wear gloves. Ah. All right, moving on. Is there something I'm missing? Other than uh, this is why I have plenty of band-aids in here. Oh, that hurts so bad. This is why I always wear my gloves whenever working on a car because the second I'm not wearing my gloves, I get hurt. It's not bad, of course, but you know, if you need to do something else during the day, it kind of gets in your in your way. Of course, I'm going to continue working without gloves because I don't know why. Let me just be the smart guy here and yank, yank. No, do not yank. No Yankee Yank here. All right. Is it? I can't see anything. That's the problem. I can't see anything because it's black. It's dark in there, and 
I do not understand. Oh, now we can remove the daytime running module. There it is. This is the upper corner. Also five LEDs. Looking good. Which is going to allow us to see much better what's going on in here. Yeah, didn't help one bit. Didn't help one bit. I still think we need to go sideways, inwards, to remove this piece. I just don't know what why on earth we cannot until we don't break something okay okay let me quickly release the cable and then I'm going to show you inside okay oh there are a couple of cables no this is just this I hate these these things because they grab really good onto it and you cannot do anything about it. There we go. Come on. All right. I'm going to come back to this. So now, what do we got? Three more screws. Did anyone count the screws? A broken piece and some more of the sand castles in the sand castles in the sand. Is it uh, from? Oh, I met your mother, I think. Maybe not. Alright, anyway. Nice. So, back to low beams module. So, it sits like... Already forgot how it sits like... Yeah, no. It sits like this, yeah, 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 this, huh? Is it? I think it sits like this. It sits like, no. It goes in like this, yes. And then this thing sits like this. This holds the matrix assembly. This, this ball point over here. And then there is one ball point over here, one ball point over here, and then one ball point all the way down here. I don't really know why they had to make it so complicated. Then we have one on this side, which is held with these three screws. And then there is this one that goes into here. So yeah, like... You have more balls than in football game. And I'm not counting the one you play with. Okay. I am fairly confident that this is the exact same module as for the LED lights. This one is really clean. So I would love for it to stay like that. Maybe we can make some auxiliary lights with it. That would be awesome because now I have already accumulated a couple of those matrix LED assembly oh oh we haven't seen this one there's there is a um, somewhat really reluctant to remove the shrouds then again I would really love to <laughs> take a sneak peek so I am going to try without damaging anything. Oh, this is now T25. How nicely of them. I really don't get it. T20 of course also works well because they are not tight. But why would you do that anyways? And I really want to show you everything there is inside so this is why I am trying to oh yeah there is one clip over here okay I suppose there are more clips somewhere else are there are there some more clips somewhere else probably yes yes they are Yes, there are. Just for the life of me, cannot 
find them. Okay. That means we will probably going to try and remove this piece first. Maybe. Nah. Nah. This thing. Oh, maybe. Yes, we got it almost out. Where is... Oh, there it is. No. It's somewhere over here. Really don't want to damage anything, uh, but I really want to... Okay. Okay, so this thing definitely needs to go out first. However, can't seem to, to, to find the other... Click. Okay, I've gotten an idea. Maybe, just maybe, you remove the most obvious clips first. Ha! Huh. Oh no. Just how smart am I to think of that, huh? Take a really big screwdriver and remove the most obvious ones first. What a revelation! I don't know just how smart you have to be to get to that idea. Somehow I've managed. There is one more clip hi hidden over there. There we go. Yes, remove this piece and it's going to show you exactly where the last clip for the shroud is at. There it is. This is the lower shroud. Now, the upper ones can really go out as well. There we go. This is the upper piece. And look at this beauty. Beauty. Now you can see much clearer. There is a PCB with only two LEDs. These looks like these look like Osram. LEDs, but I might be wrong and those are the two LED arrays with additional clear lenses What they are uh, are also a matrix matrix of Ostram LEDs Let me just put this thing back provisionally And these two actually act as a matrix and this one only lights up the rest of the way it doesn't have that smart functionality. And then we have a fan that blows the air through the whole thing. Underneath is a, most probably an LED driver that powers all the LEDs. You can see here where the hole for the fan is at and then it blows air through this whole thing and outside towards the front. So it heats up the front element of the glass which in return doesn't allow the glass to freeze in the winter. This looks really interesting, really really interesting. Plenty of screws, I don't know what, what all of them are for, I suppose adjustments because they are somewhat okay. Yeah, you don't want to play with those screws anyways unless you don't plan on putting this thing back back inside. But there you have it. This is the most important piece of the whole thing. This is the matrix LED itself. Quite a complicated assembly, really nicely put together as always with three, there we go, separate reflectors. I was wondering what we can do with this thing. So this is the last thing to, re to disassemble. I'll just quickly take a look around. Okay, I would start by removing the four, four screws in the back. Also T25, but T20 works to get the, the heat 
heatsink with the LEDs off of the rest of the assembly. Be mindful that the connector is on the upper side. At first I thought, yeah, this, this silver piece would be a great thing to paint different colors or anything. And then I realized you can almost not see it when the headlight is, is installed in the car. So I would prefer modifying the silver pieces that are um, underneath the, or above actually, above the indicator and the DRL. All right, there we go. No, still no. There we go. I'm first going to show you the LED. LED module consi consists of 11, 11 separate LEDs and the heat, sh heat sink as well, connector on this side, a really simple design if I may say so, even though every single lens is, uh, is positioned and made differently. So this is what makes it really special. It looks really cool when you look at it from different angles. This is the LED module itself. Then we have the rest of the, the module. So this is the lens itself. And this thing over here is what cuts off the unwanted part of the lights and lets out only the, up, the, the upper part, which is why we have this nice line of light and then the lower part is lit and the upper part is not lit in order not to blind off the drivers coming your direction. There is a small something on it. This is where the bug pooped, most probably. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to make a couple of photos now for probably a thumbnail or maybe, you know, just for myself. And then um, make sure to check out when the video is going to get out because I made quite a lot of videos on every single component that you usually don't see being disassembled on the internet. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. Staying a long time subscriber. Um, writing some nice in, something nice in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye.